to celebrate me. We can do it better for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are doing this song this morning. He says, only Yeshua. Yeshua means to rescue. It's an Hebrew word. It's a Hebrew word. Um, it means to deliver. And um, something actually touched me in the song is the fact that it says, to the kingdom of God, there will be no end. The kingdom of God is in our lives. It is here with us. It is the reign of God. And it is the, the reign of God in our lives. And you know, the kingdom of God in our lives is the righteousness of Jesus. It's the peace and the joy that he brings to us because that is his reign. And that is his reign being fulfilled in our lives. And we know for this reign, there'll be no end. And you know, when God is reigning, because he's reigning in our lives, things are easy for us to do. To serve him, to please him, to do his will, it becomes easy. So we are just declaring this morning, yeah, this morning, that only you, Lord Jesus, will reign forever. To your kingdom, there will be no end. And to your kingdom in our lives, there will be no end. Hallelujah.
Oh, receive. 
my whole life be expressions of your grace. Daily as I live, oh Lord, as awful as I breathe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Let's sing daily as I live, as often as I breathe. Daily as I live, I stop Who will, who will we sing love? 
no sense or I'll be known. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. I no sense or I'll be known. It's you. It's you that I see. Only you. Jesus, I the center of it all. One more time, I the center. I the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Oh, there is power. There is power in your name. You are exalted. Hey, hey, there is nothing too hard for you. you are Only you 
exalted. You are exalted. You are exalted. Unlimited God. Unlimited God. You are exalted. You are exalted. There is no limitation with you, oh God. You are exalted. You make impossibilities possible. You are Let's worship him. Let's worship him. He's exalted far above every other name. The Bible makes us to understand that the Lord has lifted up a name above every other name. At that name, Jesus, every knee must bow and every mouth confess that Jesus is Lord. Let's worship him. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Just for us to know such a privilege, we have a name and what God has done for us. The Bible says, Now thanks be to God, who always, not just for a season, who always leads us in triumph, in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place you see God's will is that we win every time it is not difficult for God to do this for us he always causes us to triumph I want you to celebrate him celebrate him because he causes us to triumph it's Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, faithful God. We give you praise. We worship you. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are worshipped. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Other version says it's God's bread. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You see, the rebuke of the Lord is not for condemnation. It's to get the be something better out of us. I want you to embrace everything he has for us today. I want you to thank God and say, Father, thank you for what you have for me today. Because I shall be thoroughly furnished with every good things that you have for me let's thank him let's worship him let's honor him let's celebrate him let's say father thank you for your word that is coming forth to me to profit me it's coming forth to me to profit me to make me perfect thoroughly furnished unto every good works thoroughly furnished unto every good works we give you praise you are exalted oh you are exalted oh you are exalted only but said god only me god you are you are you are exalted you are
sing the chorus again. Soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness no you see. No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior. There's light for a look at the Savior. And life more abundant a and free. Life more Turn your eyes upon Jesus' head. Turn your eyes upon, upon Jesus. Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And, and the things of earth we, we grow strange. to focus on him and just think about this you know it's because we're looking around to things that are unimportant and the things that have no eternal value and that's why we have a lot of trouble and chaos and all of those things in our heart but if you turn your eyes on Jesus if you look into his wonderful face the things of this earth, the material things, the, 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 the things that you can touch and feel, and all of those things that make people run elter skelter, all of those things that people consider so important, all of those things that will stop people from serving the Lord, all of those things will strangely fade, strangely disappear, they will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace i wanted to hold somebody by the end i, I wanted to pray for somebody just hold somebody by the end and say lord let me see the light of your face shining brighter than any other thing that this world can provide Lord, let me experience your glory and your grace at such level that nothing in this world makes sense and nothing in this world is important. Let me experience the power of God, the glory of God in a way that nothing else matters. I wanted to pray. I wanted to pray. You can leave the person and pray for yourself also. The Lord Ancient word ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come, we 
Happens it that we listen to God's word over and over and over again. But like we said in the first service, knowing alone will not help you. The Bible said that the seed that fell on the roadside, that the birds of the year came and pick it up. And Jesus Christ in explaining the parable said because that person, that soil, that person lacked understanding. Because it doesn't matter the volume of what you know. If you do not understand it, you cannot apply it. And if you cannot apply it, you don't have wisdom for life. And so it is not enough to know because we know a lot of things and, and everything, most times, I'll, I'll tell you this, if you've been in church for a few years, uh, scarcely can anybody preach anything that you didn't know before. But you see, it's more than that. It's more than that. Because if God reveals his word, one word from God can change the course of your life. One word from God can align things for you. One word from God can change your perception forever. One word from God can pull you out of the quagmire of, of, of disgrace and shame and, and from the pit of, of struggling. And one word from God can turn your life around. I wanted to think about that for a minute. Do you know, we've been coming to church and we're going to be in church again next Sunday. But the question is this, the things that we do listen to in church, are we changed? It's it that God lacks the capacity to change us. Or that we are not hungry enough. To let him change us. Is it that the word of God that we speak lack potency to transform? Or that men are not ready to engage him in the way that it will transform them? We know so much and yet we produce so little. Simply because, you see, there are other things that matter to us. But when you turn your eyes upon Jesus, and you behold the beauty of the Lord, there is say one thing I desire that will I seek after, to behold the beauty, beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. Nothing in this world can satisfy if you have a longing for God after laying hold of everything that matters in this world it will still mean nothing I 
Uh, sing it if you want to sing it. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Now, listen to this, listen to this. You're going to open your heart in this meeting. Much less love and beauty and love. Because God is already speaking to your heart even now. Nothing in this world to satisfy. Hey! Jesus, you're the God that But you know your heart is far is just everywhere and you're not getting this i wanted to pray right now the lord i want to know you more i want to get deeper with god i want to know you more i want to get deeper i want to get deeper just pray pray for yourself Oh! 
Lord, to follow the morning. Hello, Lord, shut up, Lord. Commit your song, just pray. Just pray. Pray. Just worship him. Just bless his holy name. For he is God, he's worthy. That's why we love you forever. You make my life so beautiful. And as you are, you are.
Father, we give you praise. You can have your sitting God's one of presence. Amen. Let's bless his holy name. Give him praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we appreciate you. Bless his name. Just give him praise. Bless him. Bless him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Turn to someone and tell the person, our God is good. Tell someone, our God is good. Amen. I believe God has already spoken to you. And so we're just going to, you know, pull it together as we go through these words. Praise God. Praise God. What a mighty God. I want us to open to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. Just open your heart and let God just tell you something that the preacher won't say this morning. Exodus chapter 34, I read from verse 29. I'll read up to 35 for my stop before that. We're talking on getting deeper with God. And I'm just, I, I'm just going to encourage us with this because it's not something we could talk about in the time that I've got. But I know God would say something to you. Verse 29. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain. <laughs> that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Oh, uh, let's read the NLT, uh, Good News Bible or NLT for that verse before I move on. Don't worry, I'll give you time. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. You can go back to Nicking James now. He wasn't aware that his face was shining because he had been with the Lord, because he had spoken with the Lord. He, he didn't know it. He was not aware of it. It just happened that whilst he was speaking with the Lord, his face became radiant and shining and he didn't even know it. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him. <laughs> then Moses called to them. They ran away. That's the bottom line. That's what he's saying. Yes. Then Moses called to them and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him. Can you see the word return? They actually moved. Because this is, this is abnormal. How can someone's face, someone who is human, how can the face be radiant and shine forth as light? W won't you run away? Oh, wait, this is Moses. We've always been with Moses. Everybody knew Moses. Now Moses had gone to speak with the Lord and his face became radiant. He didn't even know it. Can I say something? I believe that some of us will experience the supernatural in your life and it will be so normal to you that other people will have to call your attention to it. No, you didn't get that. It will just be normal. It will just be normal. And people will have to call your attention to it. Moses had to call them and they returned to him and you know the rest of the story. 
I've told you just to share with you. I just want something in your spirit to be ignited for God. Enough of all these superficial things. God lost us so much that he doesn't want to have a superficial relationship with us. God wants to have a deep relationship with us. When you really, really love someone, you don't want to have a superficial relationship with them. Mm. It's like when, if you want to marry someone, and then the person says, let us make it platonic, or what are those kind of things? You just tell the person, don't worry, bye-bye. Because when you are really in love, you don't want superficial love. You want deep experience. And God loves us so much. So much that he doesn't want to settle for superficial relationship. He wants us to get deeper with him. And when we get deeper with the Lord, something happens to us. Somebody say amen. amen. When we get deeper with God, something happens. When we get deeper, when we get deeper, something happens. There are so many little, little things that we are meddling with and struggling with that we can't get, we can't understand, we can't put our fingers in it. There are so many things about our lives that just look funny. But when we get deeper with God, some things just resolve themselves. When we get deeper with God, God walks in us even when we're not aware of it. When we get deeper with God, things begin to happen in our lives that we didn't pray for. Can I tell you this? Moses didn't pray to God that his face should shine. Moses didn't tell God, God, when I get out of this place and I meet the people, let them see your glory all over me. Let them see my face radiant. Let them see my face shining so that when I appear, the people will know that I've been with you. No, Moses didn't do that. Because it's not a prayer that you have to pray. Because you just need to be there. And... Uh, his nature will rub on you. You just need to be there. You don't need to pray. It's winter time. If you went to someone's house and they have their eating on, if you step in that house, you're going to partake of it. You don't need to pray to them if it's already on. If he's on, you just sit down. And you enjoyed the warmth in the house. Everything that we require is in the presence of the Lord. That's why his presence is heaven to us. Uh, the word heaven there, it just means that all provisions are made. All things are provided. There's nothing I'm looking for that is not in his presence. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Many things we run after, elter skelter, trying to fix. Just stay with God. Don't ever run here and there and forget God. You will sweat. You will do all of that. One thing will be right, another will be wrong. This will be correct, this will be chaotic. Do you know? But when you get deeper with God, Moses was catapulted to another level of experience, to another level in his life because he was in the presence of the Lord. But the question is this. God, now listen carefully, God didn't plan this for Moses. God planned this for all the children of Israel. 
it wasn't God who decided. Now, I gotta follow this. It wasn't God who decided that he was going to speak to Moses. The Bible said his face was radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. But it wasn't God that decided that he was only going to speak to Moses. The question, who decided that? Exodus chapter 20. I'll read from 18. Now, all the people, you know, God had told Moses, consecrate, sanctify all of these people. I want to talk to all of you. Everybody say, all of us. I want to talk to all of you. If you, if you, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this, huh? listen to this. If any man of God tells you that God has to speak to him before talking to you, he is fake. Or, he is planted, established, and rooted in the Old Testament. No, we're going somewhere. God's desire is not to have a deep relationship with the pastor. God's desire is not to have a deep relationship with the apostle. Those are offices, and we've got our job to do, praise God. God's desire is to have a deep relationship with all of his children. God's desire is to have a relationship with everyone that is called by his name. Everyone that has been bought by the blood of the Lamb. Every one of us. So God told the children of Israel, now that they've passed over, I don't want to go into all of those typologies, and they've been saved from Egypt, and all of them were out now, so God said, consecrate all of these guys. I want to talk to all of you. But the Bible said in 18, verse chapter 20, now all the people witnessed the thunderings. You know, God can act. Amen. God can act. Uh, they saw all the thunderings and all the noise and all of those flamboyance. They saw the splendor. They saw the power. They saw the thunderings. They saw all of those things. The lightning flashes. They saw the lightning flashes and moved away. Not knowing that God wanted them to be the lightning flash. Oh my God. They saw all of that. The sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. And they said to Moses, You speak to us and we will hear you. But let not speak with us. Do you know how many people are like that in the church? That's why you still go look for prophets. You speak to me. Let not God speak to me. That's why you make someone and say, please, what is the Lord saying? It's not wrong in the law saying somebody to you, but if you have an undue appetite to seek out God, to seek for God in people, you are shortchanging yourself. God wants you to have a deeper relationship with Him. This is you speak with us and we will hear you, but not let God. No, 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 no. We don't want God to talk to us. No, we don't need it because we're gonna die. And Moses said to the people, God doesn't call people to speak to them and kill them. He says, and then he says, do not fear for God has come to test you. To test you. To test what? To test your inclinations. To test your proclivities. To test the things that would matter to you. To test whether you can separate uh, signs from substance. To test uh, whether you can tell the difference uh, between God and the works of God. To test whether you know the difference uh, between, child, between Christ and church. Whether you know the difference between the building uh, and the relationship with God. To test whether you can be carried away with prophecies and miracles. To test all of those things. 
to test whether if you hear now that there's one man of God down the road in Rippleton who does miracle, you're going to be off to go get some miracles because you've worked with the Lord all your life. You can produce one for yourself. To test what? To test whether you can tell the reality from the superficial. They don't God, God doesn't want to kill you. God, the word test here is not to test, to tempt. It's to test, to prove, and to show so that you can tell difference. All of that sounds like jargons. What I'm trying to say is that God does not tempt with evil. They say, that's what God wants to do. And he says, and that is fear may be before you so that you may not sin. Now that you have seen the power of God. They didn't listen. The Bible says, so the people stood afar up, but Moses drew near. I like this sentence. I like this sentence. I'll not lie to you, this simple phrase is one of the foundation of my life whilst I was still quite young that I told myself that if God can talk to anybody God will talk to me this is one of the reasons I told myself as a 19 year old 18 even that if God can talk to anybody God can talk to me all it takes is for anyone who is ready to go deeper with God into the thick darkness where God is uh, uh, the, the, the Bible said and Moses, Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Because if you really, really want to get deeper with God, you must understand that you have to move out of, of all the superficial stuff and get deep into the darkness where God is. The word darkness here is not darkness as in evil, as many of us consider that darkness and blackness means evil. That's not true. It's descriptive of the sacrifice and the pain that is involved. Uh, here now, the word darkness here is signifying that on everybody will want to go in here now because you see, everybody will tread on what they can see, everybody will go where they can grasp, everybody will go where they can find. But what is faith? if we can tell it all and where is hope if we already have it but he says that people are ready to press into the thick darkness where god was and moses 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 decided after everybody had stopped that this is not where god is god is not just in the miracles god is not in the thunderings the problem with Christianity is that we have been driven mad um, with the hand of God and not the heart of God. Um, we have been, we have been, we have been, we have been carried and pushed uh, very deeply to seek the fingers of God, but not the hand of God. Um, and for many of us, the story will be like the children of Israel. The Bible said they knew the acts of God, uh, but they didn't know the way of God uh, because the acts of God talks about the hand of God, but the ways of God speaks about the heart of God. And only those who are ready to press a little bit deeper into the darkness will find God where God is. You know, someone say, But God is He hiding from us? God doesn't hide because God is everywhere. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is not coming. He is here. He doesn't arrive. It's always been. God doesn't come down from heaven and let his enemy be scattered. God is already here. Praise God. He is not going to come tomorrow. He doesn't say, God, come down, oh Lord, and manifest your power. You're wasting your time. You need to arise in your heart so that you can touch him because he's already there. He is Jehovah Shammah. He's the omnipresent God. He is no far from us he can't be far from us it's impossible for him to be far from us because he is already everywhere but it takes people who are going to come out of themselves and get deeper to where god is uh, look at some person god is here but are you with him <laughs> you see now god is here but are you with him are you with him 
Are you with him? How do I know that? Even Jacob in the Old Testament, he said, Hi, he, said, he, he slept and he saw vision. He said, God is already in this place and I did not know it. Did not know it. Listen to this. God wants me to get deeper. God wants you to get deeper. God wants us to get deeper. This is Christianity. This is what matters. This is the real stuff. Getting deep with God. The people say, Moses, don't speak to me. I don't want, I don't know. Forget about it. Don't, don't let God talk to us. You talk to us. That's not what God wants. Now Moses is going to lead. Anyway, Moses is still going to give you God's instruction. Moses will do all of the things that he's been called to do because of his position. But that shouldn't stop you from reaching out to your own God. Nobody can practice your Christianity for you. Nobody can be a Christian for you. You have to practice your own Christianity and be a Christian for yourself. There will be guidance, praise God. There will be, there will be, there will be the equipping of the saints. For what? Till all we all come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. We all come to the fullness. No, till some of us, no, till we all, till everyone God's desire is that everyone listening to me right now will come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. I want to come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. You want to be all of us. We are individually responsible for our own Christianity. That's not to say, you know, I don't have my job. That's not to say a pastor, a prophet, or a teacher, or uh, anyone. They, they, we do have our jobs. But listen to this. After that, what's left? It's between you and your God. And you, let me just take you back a little bit. You know this story very well. So, Moses, we're getting closer now to where we are now. And so Moses... Then, let me read a bit so that you get this. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 34, uh, and I will continue from 31. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel, all the children of Israel, um, came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord, he would take it away. Until he came out, he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Let me just tell you, it's a simple thing. So what happened is this. So, the shining of Moses' face became the sign of his authority and power with the people are you following me and so it would come now they've seen the face he called them and then they spoke with them and then after speaking with them and he had delivered god's work then he will cover the face and then now you got to be a good student bible then when you go into new testament i'm going to go there then the bible says that moses had to cover his face because the face needed to be recharged. Oh, yeah. He needed to be recharged. He needed to be in the presence of the Lord. And then when the Lord would speak to him, it would shine and become radiant. Then it will come to the people and then it will speak with a shining face. And then the people will believe and trust and know that God is speaking. And then it will cover the face now because the shining face dwindles. And then it will now appear. Then when he gets to the Lord, then he opens himself up to God. Oh, come on, can I tell you something here? There's nothing, I feel like preaching, but I'm not going to preach. Now, there's nothing you're going through in your life that you need to hide from God. Uh, listen to this. God is not the one that needs your shining face. 
You see, God is not the one that requires the beauty of your life. When you come to God, you can come just as you are. You can come with a with a not shining face. You can come with your pain and your agony, your shame, your disgrace. When you come to the Lord, you can just come like that. You know, with men, can, can I preach a little bit? You know, with the children of Israel, they will begin to disregard Moses if his face was no longer shining. So he had to cover it so that they won't see when his face was no longer shining oh come I am I talking to somebody but then when he would go to the Lord he will reveal her and then the Lord will speak to him and then boom then it comes out again face is shining where do you get your strength from the people or God where do you get your encouragement from the people Oh God, look at some tell the person get deeper with God. Tell the person it doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have, how ugly it looks or how beautiful it is. Get deeper with God. You can go to God with a face that is not radiant, and when you come out from the presence of the Lord, your face will be radiant. Hallelujah! You can go to the Lord crying and weeping. You can go to the Lord rolling on the floor. You can go to the Lord and say, God, if you're not gonna help me, nobody will help me. You can go to God and say, God, these people think I'm strong, but I'm not strong at all. You can go to God and tell the girl, tell God. God, when I get there now, they're going to think this is some big boy. But God, I'm no big boy. I need you. Need your anointing. I need your grace. I need your power. Lord, if you take not, David said, cast me not away from thy presence, oh Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. There's one song by the witness. He said, uphold me with your free spirit. Whatever you do, don't take your joy from me. Listen to this. You got to understand that when we talk about getting deeper with God, you're not coming to God to show how beautiful you are. You're not coming to God to prove a point to God. You are coming to God. With the humility of your heart is the one that makes you shine you don't make him shine he makes you shine glory to god you don't make him glorious he makes you glorious you don't make him better he makes you better you don't make him you don't make god victorious he makes you victorious we need him i'm telling you the truth we need god and that's why we got to go deeper to god and let him see just as I am without one plea. But that the blood of Jesus has been shed for me. Uh, and then you beat me to come. Now I'm here. Hallelujah. David says, seek my face. He says to me, my heart replied, your face I'll seek. And the Bible says, David said, how we press hard after God. Mm, hard. But not softly. I'll press hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, not softly. No, 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 when it's convenient. I'll press hard after God. Le le yes, amen. Lord, we want to know you more. We want to get deeper. So let's jump to the New Testament now. Second, Chron Second Corinthians chapter 3, 15 to 18. I've told you the story. So because what has to happen now, uh, Moses will come to the people and then he, he will speak to them and then quickly cover his face because and then uh, the, when you read in Corinthians, Paul explained to us that the reason was that the, 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 the shining goes down. But then he goes to the Lord and then he comes back. So I'll just join the reading from verse 15 of chapter 3, 2 Corinthians. Let me say it normally. See, that's the way my brain works. So I was going backwards like that. So let me come like this. So 2 Corinthians 3, 15 to 18. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, let me explain this. The children of Israel, they didn't know the true story. They didn't. Say amen. They didn't. They didn't. The true story between Moses and God, the children of Israel didn't know. I'm telling you now, they didn't. You see, and that's the reason for the veil. So they were covered and they were stopped from understanding the fullness of what's transpired between God and Moses. All right? So... And because of that, they had a veil in front of them between them and Moses. 
and said they couldn't tell when light goes off or on on the face of Moses. Uh, are you following what I'm saying? But even to this day, when Moses is read, speaking about the children of Israel, the veil now is not on the face of Moses, it lies on their heart. The meaning of that is this, that there is a blockade between them and God. The meaning of that is now there is a barrier between them and God. And so they couldn't press through that to see God. Oh, yeah. And that's why even to this day, there are so many people who are holding on to Judaism without Christ uh, because they're still expecting him to come because the veil is now on their heart. Are you following me? But it says, nevertheless, when one, everybody say one. Now, this is not the children of Israel. Now, this is not a Gentile, but anybody. Look at some 30 person one. Uh, 30 person, are you one? <laughs> he said, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. There's nothing stopping any one of us from assessing the presence of God freely. You can choose to get deeper with God. There's no interest, there's no in inhibition. There's nothing standing in your way. The veil has been taken away. Uh, another significant way to understand that was when Jesus died on the cross. In the Bible, so literally speaking, the veil in the temple was torn apart. Um, you know, the veil stopped people from going into the most holy place, uh, or what you call the holy, uh, the holiest of the holy place. Uh, the veil stopped people from pressing through. But when Jesus died on the cross, the veil and the temple, literally, I mean physically, was torn apart. Uh, so the veil is destroyed. The, 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 the curtain is broken. Why? So that each one of us can assess the presence of the Lord. There is no man of God, no pastor, no preacher, no apostle, no prophet. Let them call themselves most, you know, apostle, general, overseer, cathedral, whatever they want to say. There is nobody who has any right whatsoever to stand between you and your God. They can help. They can advise. They can show you the word of God. They have their position. They have their option. But you know what? As you are a Christian, so am I. I have to get deeper with God. You have to get deeper with God. And I get deeper with God to fulfill my purpose. You get deeper with God to fulfill yours. This might be mine. And not yours, but there's no purpose superior to any other purpose. Let me just put this to you very quickly. In spiritual terms, pulpit ministry is not superior to non pulpit ministry. If it's your purpose, that's the best that God wants you to do. Just take note of that. Right, yeah. And some people who are just listening to me for the first time or second time or third time, don't worry, we're only playing. Just telling you the truth. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> believe God's word with all of your heart the veil has been taken away hey, can you help me preach to somebody tell the saying the veil has been taken away you can get deeper you can go into the holy place you can go into the most holy place you don't need a ram you don't need a turtle dove you can get it right inside Veil's been taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty to do what? Liberty to serve the Lord. Liberty to worship Him. Liberty to seek his face. Liberty to call him Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Liberty to say he is my God, my Father, my shield, my buckler. Liberty to do what? Liberty to own God for yourself. 
<laughs> liberty to say, I can go in. He's my daddy, oh, he's my daddy, oh, I'll not go back for bread. You know the song like this. Oh, you don't. Liberty, liberty. That's what liberty is. Because people who are on the things of the things of the, the, the things of the spirit, we think liberty is license for licentiousness. No, liberty is not to do whatever you like. Liberty is not, is not to choose to do whatever I like. If you live your life to do whatever you like, you are the most bound person on earth because you are a slave to that which you are doing. No, real liberty. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. That liberty, that freedom is so that we can serve God with all of our heart. Without any limitation, without anybody checking on you, stopping you and saying, No, you can't go to pray. Look at some 30, I can pray anytime I lie. <laughs> Tell the person, I can even pray right now, so I'm talking to you. <laughs> I can pray when I get home. <laughs> when I'm driving, I can be with the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> I can be with the Lord on the job. Hallelujah. I might be in the board meeting, I still be with the Lord. <laughs> when you get deeper, you understand that he is all everywhere. Don't live below what you've got. Jesus has paid the price for you. And I want to tell you greater things are waiting for you. There are dimensions of divine manifestations that will not be possible until we begin to learn to spend time with God. There are dimensions of wisdom dimensions of knowledge of understanding dimension listen to this uh, listen to this with all glory be to god when i say stuff to you listen to this i spend time there are dimensions of god there are deep things of god we learned in the first service you shouldn't be in a team in an office and you are the one that they don't want to listen to Never. No, it can't happen. Listen to this. This is not arrogance. You don't know the definition of arrogance. You are arrogant because you are doing it in your own power. Humble people do it in the power of the Lord. It's not arrogance. You are the one in the team that can't talk. You are the one that can. You are, no, you think you are humble. You know, you are not humble. You are failing God. In your, you know, you are in a team. They've caught a meeting. Team meeting, but you are the one that when you want to talk, everybody just mm -hmm. they are open, they are praying in their heart. That's the only prayer they are prayed all week, just for you to shut up. No, get deeper. God will teach you things that no man can teach you. Get deeper. There are dimensions of God that God is about to reveal in your career. There are dimensions of God that is about to reveal in your marriage. There are dimensions of God that is about to reveal in your finances, in your life, in your purpose, in your job, in your profession. There are dimensions that are beyond your power that only God reveals in the secret place of the Most High. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. They that dwell in the presence of the Lord. They that abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They that are in his presence. There is no way they will not be fortified. There is no way they will not be strengthened. There is no way they will not have something that gives them just that extra. Greater things are awaiting us. Look at somebody. Tell the person, greater things are awaiting you. Uh, ask the person, where? In the presence of the Lord. When you get deeper, this one specifically, as I was thinking about this, God spoke to my heart. Listen, when, 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 when we get deeper, you're not going to struggle with character. No, listen, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You, you are not going to struggle. You know, this is my line. Line what? When you get deeper with God, you will automatically stop being a liar. You won't think about it. You know, there are things that people say, and if you are not there, you call it arrogance. There are people that people think, say, because you have no experience, you think it's not true. You think it is possible for me to ever consider in my life that I need to forgive somebody. You think it's possible? I lie to you, it is not possible. 
I will never get to a place that I have to contemplate that I need to forgive somebody. It won't even enter the thought. It can't happen. L listen to this, it can't happen. And it's not today that it won't happen. It's not last year. It's not 10 years ago. No. It, it, there are things. Look, look, tell somebody, God will teach you things. I saw one of the preaching I preached a few months ago, you know, that I was explaining that uh, in many of us here, you don't steal. How come you don't steal? You have overcome that. Say, I am not a thief. <laughs> you know, well, how come you don't steal? How come you don't steal, but you backbite? How come you don't steal, but you slander people? Is it because the Holy Spirit has not taught you? Is because you think you can get away with it. That's all. If I put a gun on your head and tell you, call your father, mother, you will do it. You will do things you think you will never do in your life. You know why? Because you have capacity to do things. Get deeper so that you will not just know it. You will have understanding and capacity to do. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I receive grace to do. Lord, it's not just knowledge. I receive understanding. I receive grace to do. I receive understanding and grace to do. I receive grace. I receive understanding to do. You know many things. Praise God. Let me bring it to a close and just tell you this. The question I have for you is this. Are you prepared to go further? Because we are back to our story. The people saw the thunderings and the noise and everything and they said, it's enough. Moses, you speak to us. As for God, let him keep his words. Let him talk to you, then you will come to us. But Moses moved and continued walking into the thick darkness where God was. The question is, are you ready to go further? Because the problem with many Christians, with many of us, is that once we begin to experience some tiny thunderings, and we can see some lightning flashes, then we suddenly become protective of self. Because what happened here was that the children of Israel became selfish and protective of self. Because immediately now, they just suddenly now think that God is a killer. Uh, the God that saved them from Egypt now wants to kill them. Can you see people? Uh, the God that, that you prayed to when you had nothing suddenly now is wasting your time. You see now? The God that you cried out to and said, God, if I can step out of this level to this level, I will save you. Now it's too much now. It's too much now. It's too much now. A big girl now, a big boy now. You know, it's too much. You know, nobody can talk to you now. You know, anybody that wants to tune now, they have to tailor it well. They have to arrange every statement to make sure that your temperament is not touched. That's why you have lost counselors. People will leave you to Eurocliden. If you don't know the meaning, go and search your Bible and let him drive you. Are you ready to go further? Do you want to stop where everybody is stopping? Or do you want to move ahead? And you know the woman that's decided to move. That I'm not going to stop. My mate can't stop here, but I'm not stopping here. And when you move, you look stupid. When you get deeper with God, people think you don't have things to do with your time. When you get deeper with God, people will say, no, it's because you can't do this. That's why you are doing this. When you get the power with God, people are going to say, oh, no, time will pass you by. When you get the power with God, they're going to say, be smart, be wise. You know, most times people tell you be smart. They are trying to tell you be stupid. Be spiritually stupid. That's what people call smart. Mm. Let's apply wisdom. Which wisdom? You know, when people ask you, let's apply wisdom, which wisdom are they applying? The wisdom of God? Of the wisdom of the flesh. Are you ready to move forward? Ruth chapter 1. 
16 to 18. You know Ruth very well. I know she's your sister. But we read. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you. Look at some third person. I'm not a commoner. <laughs> tell the person they might be doing it doesn't mean I will no, 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 leave that in. when you want to get deeper with God you must ready to face it alone when you want to get deeper with God you must be ready to turn your back on popular opinion when you want to get deeper with God you are the one that knows what you are getting deeper into the people you are discussing with you don't have a clue don't let those who are signed to serve Satan stop you from serving God. Don't. You, you see, people can come with all manner of beautiful advices. That won't be God. But we need God. Ruth said to Naomi, Entreat me not to leave you. Don't talk to me about turning back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And that God you are serving will be my God. Tell somebody, it's third person, it's by force. <laughs> it's by force. When you see people like this, this is, there is no story, it's by force. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing. NIV, I think. He says, the kingdom of God suffers violence. The violent take it by force. Yeah. The violent here is not people who can fight with guns and machine guns. The violent are not people who are insulting their departmental leaders. No, the violent are not people who like to, to, to snub people. No, the violent are people who are ready to fight the fight of the spirit. There are people who don't say yes to Satan. There are people who know how to refuse the suggestions of the world. Those are the people that can get deeper with God. He says, entreat me not. Don't give me stupid advice. Stop all this advice. You know, some say, ah, versus your mother-in-law, she's older than you. What she's saying is not of God. Entreat me not. I am not doing it. How do leave this thing? I am not doing it. I want God to be my God. You are advising me to go back to Satan. No, you can be mother-in-law, father-in-law, mother times two-in-law. It doesn't matter. The heart matters. God matters. Say, excuse me, ma. <laughs> Advise me not to turn my back on God. Are you ready to go further? But when you take that step, when you take that step, <laughs> you will never regret. Ruth made up her mind to get deeper with the God of Naomi. Ruth made up her mind after Opa had left. That is okay, Opa, bye-bye, but I'm not coming. She made up her mind that if she had to go alone, she would have to go alone. She made up her mind. To get deeper with the God that Naomi served. To get deeper with God means you are ready to go beyond your comfort and convenience. To get deeper with your, you cannot get deeper with God until you are ready to place your comfort and convenience on the altar of sacrifice. Because many of us, as I'm speaking right now, someone is telling you, that's the Holy Spirit. Right now, as I'm speaking, the, yo, 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 you can hear what he's talking about. That's about you. That's you. Let me tell your neighbor, tell the person, he, God is telling you something right now. Uh, God is telling you, know, say it to somebody. God is telling you something right now. So the Holy Spirit is telling you right now, you know why? Because you love God. The seed of God is inside of you. The incorruptible seed of God is inside of you. That's why when you come to church, you feel troubled. You feel prayed. You feel like God. Who? Ah. You feel all of those things which many of you are feeling right now. I know it. But when you leave the church, then you have to face the things of earth that only when you turn your eyes on Jesus will they strangely become dim. 
but when you turn your eyes away from Jesus they become bigger and until you put them on the altar you can't get deeper with God they're always there all around us Jesus said it Jesus said what shall we eat drink and wear he said as long as you pursue these three things which the Gentiles seek you cannot get deeper with God he said but you have to put all of that on the altar of sacrifice because your father in heaven knows that you need these things and to push it aside and seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you would you like to stand on your feet hallelujah when we get deeper with God nothing in this world means as much as it does right now when we get deeper with God, our priorities in life will change. I mean change. When we get deeper with God, reputation disappears. You know, you know, you know, you, you still, you're still bothering about people who slander you. You still bother about people who gossip about you. Oh, come on. You have too much reputation. The Bible said Jesus made himself of no reputation. You have too much reputation. When you get deeper with God, when you hear somebody talking about you, you just say they are blessed. When you get deeper with God and there is a gossip about your life, you just say it is well with them. When you get deeper with God, there are things that they don't even affect you. When you get deeper with God, you will be filled with passion to glorify his name. When you get deeper with God, your delight will be to please him and to do his will more than your daily bread. When you get deeper with God, you will be taught by the Lord to be humble. You'll be taught by the Lord to be generous. You'll be taught by the Lord to humble people. When people, you know, I know this is our amount of generosity. Maybe some of you are thinking our girl's going to be teaching on generosity today. No, it's, you know, I'm just telling you, listen to this. When you get deeper with God, God will teach you what no man can teach you when you get deeper with God. And he's not only going to teach you how to be generous, he'll teach you how to be humble. It teach you how to love people, how to be nice, how to honor people, how to build your own, how to parent your children, how to be a good wife. It teach you all of those things. When Moses was with God, God taught him a lot of things that nobody could have. Hold somebody by the hand. Hold it and feel that. I'm beginning to pray for that person. Jesus said that blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Begin to pray for that person, for their satisfaction. Begin to pray for them, for their satisfaction. Because they will begin to hunger and thirst more for God and get deeper, deeper into the thick darkness where God is. Even better than Moses, because now we can just ask this. There's no veil covering us. Veil is taken. Everything is taken. Remember, it is not he that wills, not he that runs, but God that shows mercy. Come just as you are, and God will make you what he wants you to be. Come with your pain. Come with your agony, and get deeper with God. Pray for that sister. Pray for that brother right now. Doesn't matter what they're going through. As they get deeper with God, the light of God will shine in their darkness. Their faces will shine, be radiant in the name of Jesus. As they get deeper with the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. Lord, we come before you. Father, we open up our hearts unto you. Our heart desires to live for you. Our heart desires to follow you. To hold on unto you. Our desires, O oh Lord, to place you as our highest priority and nothing else. We receive grace. We receive grace abundantly. We trust on you, Lord, that Lord, this teaching will not just be just that which is time-bound, 
such that after this gathering and then we forget but this your word will enrich our hearts eternal by the power of your spirit we will live after your word in the name of Jesus father we thank you we thank you father because your word is God's breath and Lord we have seen an admonition we have seen rebooking we have seen corrections we are thoroughly furnished in the name of Jesus and we fulfill your will your purpose your desire and your interest in the name of Jesus thank you father for your servant eternal we commit every one of us including him to you that the longing of our heart will be you and you alone in the name of Jesus thank you faithful father in Jesus name we have prayed amen praise the Lord let's uh, quickly just prepare for our offering um, just to give to the Lord what a privilege to give to the Lord uh, we have the church account on screen please if you don't have it and um, you want to transfer please you can just take a quick uh, screenshot so to say and I know the ushers also are distributing an envelope at the moment if you need one please signify uh, if you want to give in the church can we please have this scripture on screen first chronicles 29 13 and 14 we read quickly uh, this was an experience of david after he has prepared he served and solomon his son they bought everything needed to build the temple to the law but david came to this understanding that despite all that they had attained you can understand that it is from the Lord. The Bible says, Now therefore our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I? And who are my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly as this. For all things come from you and of your own we have given you. What a privilege to give to the Lord. I want us to have this in our mind. What a privilege. The Lord has blessed us and that's why we have to give. And the Lord will continue to help us in Jesus' name. Let's give cheerfully. Let's just sing quickly. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus Oh my darling Jesus You're a wonderful Lord I love you so Let's quickly go through uh, announcements. Um, there is a program coming up by God's grace next week. That's what we have on screen. Making your marriage work in the UK. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If it's been working, please come again to learn how to make it work better. And God is able to add more and more of, 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 of sweetness Amen. to our marriage. And uh, you coming also to be a blessing unto others. It's next Sunday, November 5. Um, it's going to be Zoom meeting. Please, um, this will be posted to the church WhatsApp. Please, you can send to people to invite them. It's 6 p.m. next week, Sunday. Also, we have effective parenting in UK. Uh, I know we've had um, a session some time ago, but this one is going to be in church. Please, let's come together and learn more and more to be more effective and learning one from another uh, how to parenting, so to say. 
in UK. So that comes up on Saturday, November 11, uh, and that will be in church. It's going to be between 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please take note of this ahead of the time. Uh, let's quickly look into some of our other announcements. Uh, pastor's message is on podcasts. So if you just, uh, whether the Apple podcast or Google podcast or Spotify or Amazon music, please, you just need to type grace, truth, and liberty. You can just imagine the teaching, the teaching we've just listened to today for you to listen to it again and again or to share with someone. These are available online. And I may, the church messages also are available on the YouTube. Just go to TRM Church UK. And that will be readily available. You can also share with people. Coffee morning and food bank on Tuesdays. And it's coming up this Tuesday also, which is 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Just to give back to the community and to be a blessing to people's lives. Women's Hour with Pastor Stella coming up on Wednesday, which is always on Zoom, 11 a.m. to 12. Uh, we have a chat, Grace Chat Room for college and university students and young adults. It's coming up on Thursday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Zoom. If you know any new students in the community, please share with them about this. It's quite... Um, an avenue where they meet with the hedge mates and they are quite free, very free to share. YouTube is on Fridays for secondary students and this one runs concurrently during our Bible studies every Friday. Saturday schools, which second and fourth Saturdays of every month, um, please get a form from the hushers for registration or speak to Pastor Stella for more clarity. Uh, we are on the second service. We've had a service this morning. Just to remind us, first service comes up 10 a.m. every Sunday morning, and second service, and also Children's Church, 11.45. Uh, after this service, there will be a section coming up, which is a Preston Youth Church. It's just one hour every Sunday. That's uh, mostly for students. There is an ongoing class now for workers, as been told. Please, immediately after this service, if you want to join that class, please speak to Dickens Sunday. There is an ongoing class currently, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you been blessed today? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is our year of everyday victory in every place every area. Hallelujah. Now we should have closed but it's last day of the month. If you're born in October or you have a wedding anniversary, let's quickly come. Let's pray. And then today is Abifolua's birthday, I think. Is she here? Yes. Abifolua can come.